So this is the case of a 64-year-old male uh, who was referred to medical oncology complaining of lower back pain. Part of his initial workup included a PSA that was found to be elevated at 79.5. His initial imaging studies included a technetium-99 bone scan and a CT scan of the chest, abdomen, and pelvic region. He was found not to have any evidence of metastasis in the visceral organs and or lymphadenopathy. However, his bone scan did demonstrate the presence of three areas of bone metastasis, one in the right pelvic area and two in the lumbar spine. His transrectal ultrasound with multiple prostate biopsies demonstrated the presence of adenocarcinoma of the prostate with a glycine score of 9, 5 plus 4. Part of his past medical history includes hypertension, hyperlipidemia, both well controlled on oral medications. He also has a family history of colorectal cancer. His Karnofsky performance status at presentation was 90%, and the remaining of his physical exam was completely unremarkable. At that time, the patient was deemed to be metastatic, specifically de novo, high volume metastatic prostate cancer, and the decision was for him to initiate systemic therapy with testosterone suppression using an LHRH agonist and abiraterone acetate and prednisone. Uh, initially, after he uh, started therapy, he had a, a very good serologic response, and his PSA nadir at six months was 0 0.9 nanograms per ml. Some of his side effects during therapy included a fatigue, hat flashes, and muscle aches, typical side effects from lack of testosterone. In 2017, despite of his testosterone suppression, his testosterone was less than 50 at the time, uh, developed serologic progression. His PSA in August was 1.56. A subsequent PSA in November was 4.4. Uh, however, the patient at the time was completely asymptomatic. Later on in February 2018, the patient began complaining of lower back pain again. Uh, he had left uh, pelvic uh, discomfort, specifically radiated to the right hip area, uh, and he was taking at the time over-the-counter uh, pain medications, specifically NSAIDs. His PSA at the time was 6.5, uh, so it was decided for him to undergo a new imaging scan, his whole body uh, bone scan and his CT scan of the chest, abdomen, and pelvic region. Again, demonstrated the presence of two new lesions, one in the, LF, uh, in the lumbar spine, uh, however, no evidence of epidural disease or fractures and no evidence of visceral disease was again identified. The patient then is diagnosed with minimally symptomatic metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer. At the time, the decision was for him to discontinue abiraterone acetate and prednisone and he moved on with radium-223. He completed six cycles of radium-223 on a monthly basis. He did have some improvement of his bone uh, discomfort, and he did have, however, some side effects that included fatigue and anemia. His PSA during therapy ranged from 6.5 to 8.9, but again, the patient was completely asymptomatic. Later on in September 2018, the patient now started to experience some anorexia, fatigue, and progressive abdominal pain. Again, new imaging studies were completed, a technetium-99 bone scan uh, demonstrated stability of disease in his bony metastasis. However, his CT scan of the chest, abdomen, and pelvic region now unfortunately demonstrated progressive disease, specifically with new liver metastasis. His PSA at that time is now 10.7, so not a lot of PSA for the amount of disease that he had in his scans. His hemoglobin at the time was 10, his ANC was 3,900, and his playlists were normal at 30, 331,000. Nor he has normal liver function tests, including ALT, AST, his alkaline phosphatase, and his bilirubin also were normal. His LDH, however, was elevated at 565. At the time, the decision was for the patient to initiate docetaxel-based chemotherapy, and he was placed on the standard dose of 75 milligrams per meter square on a 21-day cycle. The patient then completes six cycles of therapy with some of the expected side effects from therapy, including fatigue, alopecia, and some evidence of peripheral neuropathy. His scans at the completion of his six cycles of chemotherapy did demonstrate the presence of a stability of disease, specifically resist-defined stable disease, and he did have some decrease in tumor burden uh, in his liver metastasis. His hemoglobin at the time of completion of chemotherapy was around 12.1, you know, and his ANC and playlists were within normal limits.